wondering what the offline data and sync policies are in Oracle Mobile Cloud Service, you've come to the right place. G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. In the previous episode, we gave an overview of the different components that make up a mobile solution that includes data offline and synchronization capabilities on the client including where those components exist on both the mobile client side and service side of Oracle Mobile Cloud Service and how they interact with each other. With an understanding of the components, let's simplify this into a list of tasks, essentially what work needs to be done to get this all up and running. Just like building a regular application using MCS, you'll need to decide which APIs do you need, custom APIs or storage APIs, a combination of both. And once you've made that decision, you build and configure the APIs in the server side to support mobile clients, much like we've shown you in the other episodes. The exception being for a custom API to work with a data offline and synchronization API, it needs to supply compatible payloads and have a specific set of endpoints and HTTP methods. We'll discuss this in more detail in the upcoming videos dedicated to the server side code for data offline and synchronization soon. Now, conversely, for a storage API, unlike a custom API, as MCS creates and manages the storage API collections and objects on your behalf, the storage API is already fully compatible with the data offline and sync API. Separately, on the mobile client side, as we covered in earlier videos, you first need to download and install the native SDK for your mobile platform. Then, in your native code, if you want to consume a custom API, you define the sync policies that define how the data offline and sync API will manage interacting with the MCS server-side custom API. Alternatively, if you want to consume a storage API, in this case, the sync policies are hard-coded, so you don't need to do this. Once the sync policies are done, then you write the native code on your mobile client to interact with the remote MCS APIs. But rather than writing raw REST calls in your native platform's favorite HTTP library, you instead use the endpoint and storage classes provided by the SDK to call the server-side custom and storage APIs. Overall, in building this out, the essential part in the overall mix is sync policies. The sync policies, as I like to say, are the magic source to how the developer controls, that is you the developer, controls the functionality of the data offline and synchronization API. Now, admittedly, for the storage API, the sync policies are hard-coded to a predefined set of options. But more importantly, for custom APIs, you the developer, you have full control over setting these sync policies yourself. So the obvious question are, or is, what are these sync policies exactly? Well, the data offline and sync functionality is designed to work with a number of predefined policies. That is a set of six sync policies and their options. And the policies include periodic refresh, fetch, two policies that go together, expiration and eviction, and finally two policies, update and separately collision resolution. For custom APIs, you the developer defines these policies at a per API level, as in the remote endpoints that you're consuming from MCS, or you also define them at a global level. And you'll do this in a configuration file on the client, or dynamically, programmatically on the client, or you can set these at the server side to override the client's policies. Like we said, the storage API, conversely, the policies are hard-coded and set for you. Though in a later video, we'll consider exactly what is hard-coded and what you can set, but we won't attempt to cover it all here. We've already got a lot to cover in this video. Great, so let's talk about, uh, about the sync policies at a high level, and maybe let's talk about fetch policy first. Now, the fetch policy includes many options, but includes basic options like fetch from cache as you can probably guess, tells the mobile application to fetch the data from the local device's cache. Conversely, a really another simple option is fetch from service, where here it will only fetch data from the remote MCS service and will not fetch any data from the local cache. But the fetch policies include many more sophisticated options than this, and there's also fetch from service if cache miss. Now this option says, well, we'll attempt to get the data from the local cache first, but if we don't find it, then we'll go to the remote service. Or, and now we're ramping up in the sophistication here, the fetch with refresh option says that, well, we'll attempt to retrieve the data from the local cache, all right? So we've got something to show the user right now, but in the background, after the data has been fetched, we'll schedule a background fetch from the remote service to update the data, such that when the mobile application next fetches the data, the data is more up to date. 
so overall as you can see there is lots of vector options and we won't go through them all now we'll do that in the next episode in detail but we wanted to give you a high level feel for what the sync policy is and in this example what fetch options exist the next set of policies we want to discuss go in hand in hand and that's the expiration and eviction policies so you can appreciate a mobile application may well fetch data from remote service and that data in time may go stale or you know go outside its useful life such as um, weather observations or stock price data now the sdk could on your behalf just delete that data instantly in other words it could evict it from the cache for you however when your application goes offline if all your data is evicted this may leave your application with nothing to show the user which isn't so suitable for all mobile use cases you'd rather show something to the user rather than nothing to solve this, the SDK has the concept of data expiration, which says that the data in the cache can be optionally marked as stale, but not yet deleted. In turn, stale data can be displayed if the device is offline, but once the device returns to online, or we are online anyway, the expired stale data is ignored and we can properly evict it and fetch data from the remote service instead to get the most recently updated data. Talking about updating, what about if you're updating data on the local cache, you're updating the data. Is there any policies to assist in this? And yes, the update policy assists here because it determines if the user updates data in the local cache, what action should be undertaken to update data on the server, particularly paying attention to if the device is online or specifically offline. If we're offline, the user doesn't update, do we just display an error? Or if we're offline, can we queue those updates? And when the device returns to online, can the framework just flush those updates from the queue to the server? And yes, this is what the update policy is capable of doing. Going hand in hand with update policies and pushing data back to the server is another policy, a very sophisticated policy called the collision resolution policy. And this takes this one step further. If the locally cached object was updated and an update was sent to the server, but somebody else has updated that record since we originally downloaded it to our mobile client, who wins? What update wins? What update overwrites the server? Does the server's copy win? This is what the collision resolution policy allows you to determine and again, do it all automatically. So in summary, fetches for getting data, expiration and eviction are for managing the staleness and deletion of the data, and update and collision resolution are for handling updates with the server. Beyond these policies, at the API level, there is one other policy I do need to mention though, and that is the global policy periodic refresh. And this policy controls a background SDK thread to automatically refresh the local cache data from the server without you, the mobile developer, having to manage any of this yourself. So like I like to say, the sync policies are the magic source to making the data offline and synchronization API work, controlling its online offline behavior, where data comes from, the local cache or the remote service. Understanding the sync policies is key to understanding how powerful this framework is and how to make your applications work well from a data offline and synchronization way and ultimately keep your users happy. Now, You'll need more detail. You definitely need more detail. So in the next episode, we're going to do a deep dive into the sync policies. So I hope you'll join us with those videos so you will get to learn even more about what Oracle Mobile Cloud Service can do for you.